I'm going to be updating my shadow map tutorial as I've found what I believe to be an easier and I guess better method for baking shadow maps for your interiors. Uh, I guess without further ado, let's start. So first you're going to obviously need to take your shell and just uh, scale it so it's like just a tiny bit smaller. So it's like in the inside of the shell or whatever like this. You press Alt S and scale it. Um, then just remove all the materials and the uh, vertex colors like this and once you have all the materials removed just click like the plus here and add like a new basic material then in the shading tab we're going to add a um, diffuse BSDF instead of a principled BSDF like this and then just uh, plug it into the surface here like that then add a new image texture like this and we're just going to make a uh, new image. I'm just gonna make this like 2048 by 2048. You don't have to make it this big, but I just want to show it for example. Um, then just make sure you have it selected like this. Uh, we can go back to the layout and for the lighting, what we're gonna be doing is so you can see I have like a couple lights placed around. Um, if you go to the rendered view, you'll see why. I'm using them to like cast shadows on specific areas. Like so, for example, here have one set up here so it casts it on the legs here um, let's say for example you wanted to cast shadows specifically on something let's find something um, I guess we could do uh, like this chair here or something you can, like duplicate the light over here and then just move it away from it a bit uh, we might need to remove some of these other lights so we can see it like that one there yeah so if we move this around, you'll see the shadows changing with it, and that'll change how it's baked. So we like how the shadow is like this. We can keep that light there. And for the light settings, you can change the power. I usually leave it pretty low, and just make sure you have these three checkboxes enabled. And uh, for the bake settings, um, for, or for the render settings, I'm going to be using pretty like high threshold. This is so it speeds it up. Uh, samples, I'm just going to use 2048. You don't need to use denoising, but you can if you want. Uh, for the light paths, I'm just using one for all of these. You can up this if you want to like maybe improve the quality, but it'll take longer. And then for the bake type, I'm going to be baking a shadow, and that's pretty much it. Just make sure you have your shadow map uh, mesh selected, and make sure you have your image selected. Uh, actually, I forgot. Uh, last thing you need to do is obviously UV unwrap it so it fits into one texture so you can just smart UV project it. And if you want, you can pack it with something else like UV Pack Master. Uh, default is fine pretty much. And with it unwrapped, you can just go ahead and click bake. And it'll take a second and we'll have a new shadow map in a second. And once your shadow map is finished baking, just go ahead and save the image. And then last thing we need to, or not last thing, but one of the last things we need to do is go into Photoshop and then open up our baked shadow map. And we're just going to press uh, Control I to invert it, I believe it should be. Wait, hello? Why is it not? Oh, it's, I have to select the layer. Okay, so Control I. Uh, then we're going to do, go to Image, Mode, and then Grayscale. And now we can go to Adjustments and then Levels. And we're just going to tweak it until it's like a... So it's like smooth and there's like a gradient to it, almost like this. Just so there's more like, I guess, levels to it, colors, like grays. And then something like that. And then we can just save this as uh, DDS. I'll just name this like Shadow Map Test, whatever, and then save this. Then we're going to save it as BC1. And we're going to set the max mip map count to four pixels. And the filter type, we're just going to use the Mitchell one, as this gets the best results. Then we can go back into Blender, remove the temporary material, go to Solemns and add a decal dirt shader. And in the shading tab, we can just go ahead and apply our image. And here you'll see that the white areas is the shadow, and it looks pretty good compared to previous, I guess, methods. Um, then what we can do is last thing we need to do actually is go to the color attributes 
and just make a new one called color one and just make it black that's all you need to do really and then uh, i should mention that for the archetype properties you need to make sure that it has the flags uh don't cast shadows so it doesn't cast shadows over nothing and that's pretty much it honestly so i guess uh any any suggestions for future videos or topics whatever just leave it in the comments and yeah